Game number three of the NBL Canada Finals is officially in the books here at Budweiser Gardens. The London Lightning fall to the Halifax Hurricanes, and uh, they now are down in the series 2-1. Oddly, Stevenson standing next to my man, Mitchell Kobe K. And Mitch, you know, great game. Uh, it was a furious fourth quarter coming down the stretch. What would you think? I thought it was fantastic, and sometimes it isn't the, the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And when you look at this London Lightning team, sure, there were some mistakes tonight. They're going to go back to the drawing board, try and fix some things. 20 turnovers, that's got to be one. Oh, but they did a good job in other areas. The series now 2-1. Two, two more games to play here in London. So if I'm the Lightning, I'm going back to the drawing board. I'm staying calm, cool, and collected. I'm going to get myself together, and I'm going to come back to Budweiser Gardens and go at this Halifax team. Sure. Well, you know, I don't think anyone expected this to be a short series. So in order to get to seven games or six games or whatever that is, someone's going to have to lose a couple. And we saw the London Lightning lose their first one here at home in the series. Uh, Coach Hugo Lopez has to be quite happy with his performance of uh, his Hurricane squad. Uh, we threw to hit. We, talk, we, we caught up with him after the game, and he spoke a lot about patience and composure. Check it out. I think the guys did a great job. You know, I mean, uh, I got to give them a lot of credit. We never quit. You know, I mean, it was a tough game. We got a lead, but I mean, they're a solid team too. They came back hard, but I mean, we never, we never lost composure. You know, what I'm saying so. I think, I think it was a tough game for both both teams. I mean, we won, but I mean, it's still a lot of, a lot of to go. They hit shots. I mean, both teams were a little bit off uh, from the three-point line. They hit a couple of big threes down the stretch. I mean, and they cut the lead. So. I mean, we were up by eight with like a minute and a half to go, but they came back. But I mean, they're good. I mean, we expect them to come back any given time. So I mean, we just gotta uh, finish the game. That's the, that's, the, that's what I told you guys. You know, we just gotta finish the game in the right way. We kept them in 96 points, but I mean, it's still our defense gave a couple easy layups, easy points that we should avoid. I, mean, I think Coach Julius is a great coach, you know, I mean, they got, he, he got a good game plan, I mean, we got a different strategy, uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're going on the zone sometimes, match-up zone, so I mean, we're in the final, so we expect the best from London. Yeah, Coach Hugo Lopez had a lot of respect for his opponents, uh, the London Lightning, as you heard him uh, say they are a very good team. Uh, when we talk about the London Lightning, uh, they can't overall be happy with their performance. When you look at uh, the turnovers are quite high. They miss a lot of free throws in a close game. You can't afford to miss those free throws. And defensively, especially in the, down the stretch in the fourth quarter, wasn't big. I'm guessing Coach Kyle Julius isn't thrilled with that. No, and I, and I want to talk about free throws, not just in this game, oddly, but they've impacted all all three of these games, I think it would be fair to say that, that they helped London win the first game. Oh, um, Halifax, 62% from the free throw line, I believe. And then in game two, it was Halifax up over 80%, London at around 70%. And here tonight, it hurts the Lightning once again, 54% from the line, 37 attempts. Both of these teams are getting to the charity stripe time and time again. So there's definitely a battle going on from the free throw line. London lost it tonight. Now, they, they finished this game down by five and look at all the missed free throws. So it had absolute impact in this one. Right. And in a close game, you can't be happy with that or thrilled. I mean, you know, because at the end of the day, for, from Kyle Julius's perspective, you can't coach how to shoot free throws. You can't coach someone to shoot better. That's on the individual player. And that's just the reality. Absolutely. Uh, Akeem Scott, 5 of 10. Now, he had a great game, and he's one of the most dynamic forces at getting to the rim in this league. But like I said, fourth quarter woes from the free throw line. So this is just something that they have to go back to the drawing board, believe in themselves, correct, and come back stronger. Now, speaking of going back to the drawing board, I'm sure Coach Kyle Julius uh, could probably echo that as well. Let's go to him and hear what he had to say in his post-game comments. Uh, but overall, you know, uh, we, when you shoot the ball 54% from the, the free throw line, 23% from the three point line, and then you have 20 turnovers, it doesn't matter who you're playing, you'll never win with those numbers. We were, we were bad from the start tonight, it's unfortunate, it's disappointing, um, and uh, we got to regroup, but it was, it was a tough one, it was a bad one tonight. 
We broke down too many times. We Overall, we had a lot of good possessions. I mean, if you look at the start of the game, we held them to shot clock shots four or five times. Uh, uh, several times we, we had stops, and then they scored at the very end. You know, we missed a few switching assignments. Uh, I was frustrated. I, I didn't think we were very good on either end of the ball today at all. We, we've been together for five months, right? There's no more development. This is you come out and you execute or you don't. Okay, you come out and execute or you don't. We were searching for things tonight after a few subs, and, and uh, I thought that we looked tired a few times. I thought that we, I thought that we were indecisive a few times. I thought that we played uncharacteristically, you know, for our style. We were really uncharacteristic. Some of the decisions we made and, and mistakes we had. So no, it's not about talking about anything. It's about if we want to play or not. I mean, we have a good basketball team in there. We've proven that. We went on the road and beat them on the road. Uh, if they come and play with the energy and, and togetherness that we need to win, then then we'll be okay. And if they don't, we won't. You know, Mitch, one thing that we saw from Halifax tonight that uh, Coach Lopez has to be proud about uh, is the bench scoring 62 points. When your bench can give you that kind of production, it certainly relieves a lot of pressure from your starters uh, and it gives you a, a much needed shot in the arm. Uh, one of the guys that was big was Brandon Bowdry coming off the bench. Yeah, he did a fantastic job and I think he's really embraced that role and taking it on and really about that concerted team effort style of play. And like I said, embrace that role. And he did that tonight. And it served the team well. Like you said, 62 points off the bench. And being on the road, I mean, that's a huge number. Because it's telling you that everybody is committed to the process. Right. And, you know, normally, you know, you oftentimes, uh, you know, those others, if you will, those role players, you know, they don't often have that kind of production on the road. Uh, Mr. Bowdry definitely did. And we had to catch up with him to ask him about that. I just try to come in and give, you know, extra effort and uh, play with urgency coming off the bench uh, I just got to give you know to my guys what I know that they need from me and as an energy being active you know and bringing just a different uh, view of the game from the bench so you know that's what I try to do stay to my game and stay to what the guys know that I can do and just you know and, and it worked for me today you know we have strong bids and um, don't take nothing away from those guys they do a great job of you know initiating a double team but what we was able to do is stay patient and also continue to stay aggressive don't let those guys take us out of our game uh, and also just, just in adverse times, take advantage of things that was open while they were double teaming. And we, we were able to do that. We were able to come out with a win, which is a plus. Uh, of course, we got to go back and uh, make some changes, make some, uh, some corrections on some things. Uh, we, you're never satisfied. I mean, it's one game, and we got to go to the next one. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, Brandon Bowdry, like you, you know, you heard him talk about, is, is big, and you know, it's really cool, and I, and I really, really love the fact that he talked about you know, embracing his role. He recognizes what needs to be done from the bench, and when he comes into the game, he does exactly that. You know, that much-needed shot in the arm, and hey, I mean, what more can you say about that? And those are the types of players that help you win championships. It's not all about the stars. It's 1 through 12, or whatever the case may be. Instrumental pieces to these teams getting it done. You know, speaking of instrumental pieces, uh, Akeem Scott of the London Lightning, uh, we saw him tonight uh, really, you know, force the issue. Uh, many instances late in the shot clock, you know, he was bailing the team out uh, with a desperation three that would fall. Uh, and, and, he's and we've seen this from him, you know, pretty much the whole series. In fact, since he joined the London Lightning in the last 11 games of the regular season, he's done this and been this leader. And we caught up with him because certainly, you know, when, when you think about uh, losing game three, it's really easy to hit the panic button. It's really easy to lose your composure, but we know better. Akeem Scott's not about that. Here's what he had to say. Well, the mindset for us is well, we're not going to panic. There's no reason to hit the panic button. Um, the main thing, we got to take care of tomorrow. We got to take him out, make sure our emotions are straight, watch video, eat good food, drink lots of water, just prepare, do the little things. That's what counts at the end, it's the little things. And um, we're built for seven games. We're built for seven games. And we've ended every series that we played this year, we ended at somebody else's house. So I see the pattern. Now we just got to believe. Keep the belief. Keep believing. And just have faith in each other. Trust each other. And uh, whatever happens, happens. You know, just keep playing with heart. You know, as we're listening to Keem Scott, uh, I think of the way he closed out that third quarter. There must have been two and a half seconds left on the, in the game clock. And, uh, and he motored all the way down, uh, dribbled between a couple defenders, which, which that in itself was impressive, had a spin move, and was still able to bank in that shot uh, to give the London Lightning a bit of shot in the arm heading into the fourth as it was starting to mount their comeback. It was great clock management. He had limited time and space to work with, and that really got the crowd into it. What a great way to start the fourth quarter to get everybody in 
in. And, you know, London made a nice run there in that fourth and final frame, so no doubt about it. That leadership and that shot from Akeem Scott helped transition them into the fourth quarter. No, let, let's talk a little bit about the, Lond uh, the London Lightning uh, defense on the bigs because, uh, you know, H Halifax Hurricanes, they present some real problems up for you on the offensive end because you've got great guards, Justin Johnson, uh, Shane Gibson, who, who were relatively quiet. I know in the fourth quarter, uh, Justin was a bit more active and hit some big free throws, but overall, you know, relatively quiet. Uh, but then you have the, the sort of double-edged sword because the bigs are just, you know, Kyle Hunt, Mike Glover, you know, Billy White when he gets in and messes around. They present all kinds of problems. They do. London would bring the double team at different times and throw different looks at them, but there were some defensive breakdowns, and they gave away some easy shots at the rim. And I know that's something Kyle Julius is going to look at when they do their film study. Uh, they put them on the free throw line quite a bit, and it's a lot of size, oddly, and a lot of strength to deal with. And it's something that they're going to have to go back to the lab and try to amend. You know, both of those bigs, um, for Halifax were fantastic tonight. 16 points and 15 points. Oh, great on the glass. And you, and you look at Glover. I mean, defensively, he's fantastic. He can come out to the top of the yeah. perimeter and defend. He doesn't get worried about having to stay under the net because he's got all that speed. Doesn't get caught in no man's lane. I love his game on both sides of the ball. Yeah, he was really patient tonight down low and really took his time. And, and again, when you, th when, the, when you top with the double team, throws you off your game. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it's not. And, you know, you, you're not quite sure, you know, what to do because you, you, you want to read the defense. Well, he was really patient on the block. And, and again, his contribution uh, was big. You know, as we look ahead to game number four, that's going to be a big one, Mitch, because either one team will go up 3-1, to one, in this case Halifax, or the London Lightning will tie it up 2-2. Two, two. Uh, thoughts going into the fourth game? Well, London has to be confident. They won a game on the road, and that was what they needed to do. Get out of Halifax with one, and they did that. Tonight was very close. Two more at Budweiser Gardens. I say they take one uh, step at a time, and they just believe in this process. And for Halifax, they're going to be riding sky high with some confidence right now. But like I said, one step at a time, they know that it's just one game at a time. And I'm sure these two are going to go to war here when they meet for Game 4. Game four is promising to be thrilling. There's no question about that. Uh, here at Bud Budweiser Gardens, again, the format 2-3-2. Two, two. We did the first two in Halifax, the next three here on Budweiser, in Budweiser Gardens. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's bound to be exciting. Uh, my instrumental partner here, Mitchell Covey K, and myself, Audley Stevenson, we're signing off. You've been watching the Baron Championship Rings post-game wrap-up.